welcome to the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips, and today it's all about doing custom frames for welcome sign 3D art, original art, traditional framing, and then a gnome door. These are great projects. Stay with us. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. Now let's dig right into doing framework. And we're going to start with weathered wood to begin with. And here are a couple tips for you. Because sometimes people say, well, I can't find weather wood. Sure you can. You can go to any store, buy a normal board. In this case, this is white pine, but it will work with any soft wood. To get this weathered look like that, what you do is you use vinegar and you put in ordinary steel wool, let it rust up for a day, and then you scrub that on with a good glove on and you let that soak in and then a day it will look like this and it will just keep getting darker and richer and it looks like barn wood and you don't have to worry about bugs that way. But let's say you recycle some southern yellow pine that's 170 years old, beautiful stuff from Joe Drap. Thank you, Joe. But it did have a few of these in it. This is called powder post beetle. And it starts out life as a tiny little hole on the outside of the wood. But it will totally destroy the wood over the course of years and it can stay active for years. So how do you treat that? You use this, it's called Shell Guard. It's a borate salt, follow the instructions, 50-50 with lukewarm water, and you brush it on, let it cure, and I like to let it dry for at least two weeks, and that will take care of the bugs. So, those are the tips about the wood, and now what we're going to do is some data work to frame out the 3D carving that you saw Susie do last week and also cut frame material for the traditional framing. Off to the table saw. Remember, work safely. Whatever you do, read, follow, and understand all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. These are prescription safety glasses. I've added the side shields, that's an option, and that's good when you're doing things that can throw chips. Also, I'm using a stack dado assembly on the table saw with a sacrificial fence, so when I turn it on, I can butt this and get a cut that's 3 eighths of an inch deep and a half an inch wide. And I'm using this feather board on the out feed to securely hold that workpiece against the fence. Now I'll make these cuts using push blocks, and I'll do that for all the traditional framing material that I need. Uh, beyond that, I'll turn off the saw, reposition the fence and the feather board, and I can cut grooves in the very middle of that southern yellow pine. And I'll cut enough of that stuff so we can bevel cut those ends and frame out the sign. So I'll get that all done at the table saw. Now whatever you do, when you finish a miter cut, let that blade come to a stop before you retract it, and also the scrap always falls away from the blade. That's important. I have the clamp that holds it down, and there is a vertical miter cut right there where I tilt the saw to 45 degrees, and here you can see what I've done. I've boxed in this workpiece here that's an inch and three quarters thick, and that frames up the three-dimensional moose carving. And you just cut it to size to channel in the workpiece. Now what I can do is flip this over, come up with a layout line to finish the length right here, so it has to be precise. And to make this work, you have to have a laser. 
right here and you turn that on on the back of the saw and you can precisely bring this up to your layout line and cut everything accurately. Make sure you use that hold down clamp there and keep your hands well away from the blade as you make these cuts. So complementary angles, make the cut. Let it come to a stop. That's good. Release the clamp. And that all gets joined together over at the workbench after we finish making the 45 degree cuts to accept the channel for the custom frames. And to do that, what we have to do is release this back lock, swing this into the up and lock position. Next, I release this and pivot this and lock it in at 45 degrees, bring my workpiece up, and with the laser line, I can easily see my layout lines. I clamp this in place, and now I can make all the mitered cuts. And once that's done, go over to the workbench to assemble these. Let's take these 3D panels that were carved on last week's shows and slide them into this L frame out of that southern yellow pine. And now what I'm going to do is complete this for a really cool look. And I've put glue on the ends of the joints. I bring up a square and clamp it to the bench so I can square up these corners. And then with side shields on my safety glasses, I use a 16 gauge, two and a quarter inch long brad nail that has glue on it. And I join that together and I bring this up and frame this entire carving together, getting it in the channel. And that is a masterpiece that looks so cool. And I'll finish bratting that down in just a moment. I like glue on the ends to size it. But now let me get this over to Susie because you can see that channel for the beautiful artwork. Well, it needs one more accent on the scroll saw. All right, you got the board for me? I do. And what we're going to do, you can see the channel in the back for the beautiful artwork, and there's my center point. The ends are mitered. And now what I'm doing is I'm lining up the Silver Lake pattern right on the center point. And on the back, I use a temporary bond spray mount adhesive, and you want a temporary bond, and I've let that dry for about three minutes. Otherwise, if you put it down wet, it's a bear to get off. Right. Okay, and then the other thing is she's going to start scrolling the name of Silver Lake right here, and I need to drill that at a four and a half degree angle, roughly, okay, and that's to pierce the blade through. Now, Susie, show us how this works here. Well, I've got a practice board here, and as you can see, Tilting the table or the blade at a four and a half degree angle is what makes the letters pop out this way And you also have to cut it in a clockwise motion, but you can kind of see the effect I'm getting here where that's raised And it's, it's gonna look 3D. really cool on that frame. Yeah, it really gives it that 3d effect And we can sand the letters down lightly and that will make it stand out even yeah, more really make and them then, pop and then I use a number seven blade, if you can see that. It's a tiny little blade, but gets a great cut with, it's got about 10 and a half teeth per inch. Okay, and it's a great idea to do a practice piece, and it will show you exactly, because of the bevel cut, how much that piece, when you cut in a clockwise fashion, will pop out. And that's how we figured out four and a half was perfect for this. Right, all right, well, I'm ready to cut it out. I'm going to pierce the blade through this hole that Scott drilled for me. Okay, and while you do that, I'm off to completing frames. All right, I'll get to work. Okay, so I've pierced the blade through the pilot hole. Now it's time to get this all positioned correctly. I want to make sure I get this blade all the way back in the jaws of this chuck and tighten it down here. And then I've got my tensioning lever, and that's still a little loose, so I'm going to turn the tensioning knob here, maybe just a little bit more, 
And I think I should be ready. I've got the blower in place. So now it's just time to turn it on and make some cuts. Okay, and I just want to make sure I keep my hands firmly on the table and just let the, the scroll saw blade do the work for me. Just take this turn easy. Just take my time and go and make that curve. And when you're doing those curves, I kind of put a little bit of just a little bit of tension on the back of the blade that helps me make that turn successfully. The flat of the blade is just like a rudder on the ship. It helps you follow your line. Keep taking my time here and easing that around. And just keep following the line. That blade's doing all the work for me. Getting in this curve, so I'm going to kind of pull back a little bit on that blade just so I can finesse this turn. Just take my time. Here, and I want to make sure I still keep pressure on that. And just, and just ease it around. make that cut. Okay, I'm almost through. Oh, that's the sound I wanted to hear. Finish that cut. Release the tension, unlock all this, and we'll pull it up, and I'll show you just how this works. Look at that. Pops out perfectly. Let's see, if I take this off, then you can see the letter. If we want that to pop, we can sand it a little bit. So now I just pop it back through there. I've got my E all done. And it's off to finish the other letters. And I'll just thread them through here, back through the big hole, and get it all set up and cut out the rest of the letters. And once again, go in a clockwise fashion so it pops up and not back. And I'll get it done in no time at all. For more tips behind the American Woodshop, go to the American Woodshop website, which is wbgu.org slash American Woodshop. And be sure to like us on Facebook. I'm almost out of there with my final cut on the S for Silver Lake. Here we go. All right. Can't wait to see how this all looks. That's going to pop out of there. And here we go. Silver Lake. I'll peel that off. I thought I was. There we go. And get all these off. And boy, it's really, really looking good. I've got all the hard part done. And I really want to give a shout out to Bert Whitman. He taught us how to do this long ago. He did this for Scott. Thanks, Bert. Really appreciate it. Ooh, I love it. This looks good. All right, here we go. Silver Lake. Now let's let Scott get the easy part done. Let's go see what he's up to. Okay, Scott, I got her done. Oh, look at What do good. you think? That Moment looks... of truth. A little bit sticking here in the middle. Okay. It looks great. Really does. Thanks. Okay, and that will be brightened up on the top. Right. Not the background. And this is glued in from the back with a good wood glue, but not until the whole frame is assembled because we'll need to lay this flat. So what we'll do is pop those letters flat and then they all come out just like that. Yep. Okay, so set those safely aside. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to do is create the pocket holes that will join the two sides to the top and bottom. And to do that, this is the back of the frame. I just bring this up so that this jig is centered up so I can drill three holes. So here we go. One, just like that. Two. Three, and what I do is repeat that process for all four corners. And the beautiful thing about this is when you draw it all tight together, you don't need clamps, just a little bit of glue on the corners. So I'll get this drilled and then we'll put it together. All right. We size glue on all of the corners, it'll be mated together. And what I'm doing right now is bringing 
this corner up to a corner, and now I can clamp this down using this auto action clamp, making sure that the inside corner is square, and then I have this set so that it will not strip out the threads in these coarse inch and a quarter long screws, square drive, and I just draw all four corners together using this same technique. And um, Susie wisely asked me if it <laughs> was the proper size for Spirit Lake and, or Silver Lake, and minor adjustments were made. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, clamp please. All right, bring it on home. That's good. Thank you. Uh huh. Teamwork. Teamwork, absolutely. Can't beat it. One of the best times you'll ever have in a family is when you're building things together. Memories. Absolutely. To save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and glued and screwed all four corners together. I glued the letters in from the back so they're there to stay. And now what I can do is trim out the edge by bringing up this cedar barn siding and filling out these corners. And see this was mitered, a vertical miter on the end, and I did that at the miter saw. First I cut one end, and then I used a stop on the rail to cut the other end precisely to the length that I needed. And once that's cut at the miter saw, it's a simple matter of using a micro pinner to tack these work pieces in place, and I put glue on it all the way around, and the glue is the type of wood glue that dries clear. And once I get this trimmed out, we'll see how Silver Lake fits this beautiful frame. Oh, one final thing here. Right here, I'm going to sand down Silver Lake just a little bit like this with a little sandpaper to make that really shine. I'll get this finished. I love the way that brightened it up, Scott. I'm going to do the same to the lake. Okay. 100 grit is all it takes just on the top of the letters, and as she gets that down, this is a clip that clips into the edge of the canvas here that you can see on the back edge like that. Beautiful. Very cool. Okay, and I'll swing this around. We have the channel on the back, and those points just clip up and in, like so, and then you can put more clips on there, but let's take a look at this to secure it. And there you have it. Wow, that's beautiful, it's perfect. And on Antiques Roadshow, they talk about how the original frame makes the art even more valuable. Well, this is an original Scott Susie frame, so it's there more valuable. Go. Okay, so now, on to the gnome door. Let's this go. Now it's time to create the gnome door. Let's go over to Scott on the table saw and see the magic come out of this cedar shake. Now at the table saw, I'll turn on the dust collectors because this cedar has toxins in it that stops it from decaying, and this is cedar shake. You do not want to breathe that. This guard has a chute in it to help pick up the dust off the top of the blade, and the blade's no more than a quarter of an inch above the thickest part of the wood. So I'm gonna use a good straight edge against the fence here that's locked in place at an inch and an eighth, and I'll end up with nine strips of cedar that have that nice rough texture to it that we'll need for the glue up. I need a good thin push stick so that I can push it through like that and I'll just make those cuts. Carrying protection on, these are safety glasses. Take your time, never stand behind the blade always off to the side as you make those cuts. All the way through, respect that blade. Finish all the slats you need for the door. Straight from the table saw, it's on to using thick viscosity cyanoacrylate adhesive to mouthful. 
and I put the activator on the mating side and I press these together, just like that, line it up, and I let this entire assembly of nine strips, nine strips wide, cure out. And once it's cured out, I can cut out the door. But Susie, talk about the frame. Well, once you got the door frame out, it's all about selecting the stones to go around the frame. And I just use thin set mortar and just, just like a puzzle, get them placed in there. And that's all it needs, the mortar to bond to that wood. And speaking of the wood frame, take a look at this. You see that frame? The way I create it is with a bow jig. It's just a thin piece of white oak, about 3 sixteenths, with a centerpiece with notches to create the curves for the door frame. I make a master template, use that to create the interior door. You want about a quarter inch gap around the edge for the door to work right. And then I transfer that to three quarter inch thick plywood. And then I go to the bandsaw, I cut that frame out, and then I fasten two three quarter inch thick door frames together with fasteners and glue. And then it's off to Susie to do the thin set and get the stone work done. While she does that, I will sculpt in the cedar strip door on the bandsaw on the outside shape. And then I use the scroll saw with the bevel cutting technique that we used on the sign for the frame. And I cut out two concentric circles. And once that's done, we just fit everything together, a little bit of barn red paint, we're off to the races. Oh, outstanding. Love it. I do. Great door frame there. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And now you know how to make your own gnome door. Uh, high end, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now where are you headed? I'm heading outside. Okay, and I'm off to make a gnome. There's just one problem when you have a gnome door. You have to have a gnome. So I called the gnome carver, Jim Foster, and this is what he came up with. And it's fantastic, Jim. Now, in my mind, carving the face is the hardest thing to do. You even did a gnome here. <laughs> yeah, I took a, took a snowman and turned him into a little gnome and <laughs> put a little pipe in his mouth and made him look kind of cool. <laughs> oh, he does look cool. Now, give us the tips on carving a face here. Let's see the easy right. way to carve a face. You got a block of wood. And you got a very sharp knife. Okay. So. And the first thing you do is you make a nose. Okay. So you make the bottom of the nose with a stop cut there, come up above it, there's your eyes, put your eyebrows in there for your eyes, take a scoop gouge, make a pocket there. So now it's on to the mouth. Got to get a chin in there first. Take her lips and just come across the top where we draw the line. Come underneath that a little bit. And that is a remarkable way in less than three minutes to carve a face. And with that being said, this is spectacular. What one tip do you have to inspire all carvers out there? You know, you just said it takes, took us three minutes to carve this. Mm -hmm. First time I did this, took me hours. <laughs> so the only way that you're going to learn to carve this is you have to practice, practice, practice. Good tip. I, I still practice. I practice three hours a day. Well, thank you very much for your inspiration, Jim. Thank you. Keep the fine work coming. Now. By the way. Yes, sir. Did your wife get to retire yet? She did. In fact. We're off to see her right now. I don't know what she's up to. Let's head on outside. Thanks a million. <laughs> All right. Now, Susie's around here somewhere, and <laughs> oh, Susie, what, what in the world are you doing? Cass, go get her. Go get her. Don't you dare. I love the way the gnome door turned out. The beautiful barn red wood framed out with the cool stones we've collected along the way in Michigan. It's a lot of fun. I'd like to thank my friend Demi for the great idea. And I got one coming your way. Thanks to Jim for carving the really cool gnomes, his and hers. Hope you've enjoyed the show with the custom <laughs> framing and the custom 3D framing. It's a lot of stuff, so hope you got all those great tips. That's my wife. And that's a wrap from the American Wood Shop. See you next week. <laughs> 
Craft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Woodshop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Hey,